Our Lord in today's Gospel reading gives us a number of parables regarding the Kingdom of Heaven. And it's important that we remind ourselves that we will not possess the Kingdom of Heaven fully until we make it to Heaven. However, we begin to possess the Kingdom of God here and now. And some people possess it more than others. And it depends upon our relationship with God, how close we are to God. The closer we are to God, the more fully we possess the kingdom of God within us here and now. Notice how our Lord twice reiterates that the individual who finds the treasure or the pearl sells everything that he has in order to possess that treasure. So the kingdom of God is like a treasure that is more valuable than anything else. In other words, if we understood what the kingdom of God really entails, we would be willing to give up all things, especially sin, but we would be willing to give up all our possessions, everything, in order to possess the kingdom of God. And why is it such a great tre uh, treasure? Why is it so valuable? Many reasons, but our Lord actually tells us in the third parable, when he talks about the net that is thrown into the sea and the good and the bad are separated. So it's a reminder to us of the reality of heaven and hell. Some will end up in heaven, others will end up in hell, and this will be for all eternity. And so if we really understand what heaven and hell is really all about, we would realize we want heaven, and we would be willing to make all kinds of sacrifices in order to possess the kingdom of heaven. And this is very, very important because so many people, they just live for the present moment. But you see, even if we live to be 120 years old, what is that compared to eternity? Eternity is forever and ever. So 120 years is like nothing compared to eternity. So how do we use the time that we have now? Are we striving for the kingdom of heaven or are we striving for the things of this world? Now notice our Lord, he goes on to say in the second parable, he says the kingdom of heaven is like a fine pearl. In other words, it's something precious valuable, beautiful, sparkling, something that's not just valuable, but beautiful to behold. And he uses this to compare the kingdom of heaven. He's saying the kingdom of heaven is beautiful to behold. It's precious. It's magnificent. It's glorious. It's wonderful. But you see, even if I were to explain to you, which I'm going to do, even if I were to explain to you something of this beauty of possessing the kingdom of heaven, many people will not understand it. And our degree of understanding will be dependent upon our previous understanding of spiritual truths, but it will also be dependent upon our closeness to God here and now. So why is possessing the kingdom of God something beautiful? Well, first and foremost, because you see, all of us are sinners. And I think people who are great sinners, who have committed a lot of sins or perhaps very shameful sins, they tr more fully appreciate and understand what God offers us when he gives us or offers us or makes available to us the sacrament of confession. To be able to have our sins forgiven, to not to have to live with that guilt, with that shame, to kind of give us an, a new lease on life, turning over a new leaf. It's a beautiful thing to have your sins forgiven. Sometimes when I hear confessions, sometimes people weep tears of joy knowing that their horrible sins have been forgiven, wiped clean, that they have a new start on life. This is beautiful. It's wonderful. And not only can our sins be forgiven, but we become the adopted children of God. We enter into this royalty of God. We enter into the family of God. We become heirs of heaven. This is truly wonderful. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's glorious. If we understand it. Now, the other reason why possessing the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven here and now is so, so beautiful and, and marvelous is because it gives us a purpose for our existence. You see, so many people, they seek fame and fortune and, you know, they, they want to have relationships or they just want to have sexual pleasure or whatever. They think they can find their happiness in these things. And after a while, they realize those things don't make them happy. And eventually, some of them even commit suicide because they give up hope. Oh, I'm not good looking. I can't find this or I can't obtain that. 
But you see, when, when we have the kingdom of heaven, then we have a purpose for our existence. We don't exist just for the here and now. We exist for all eternity. We exist to promote the kingdom of God. But not only that, God calls us to a relationship of love with Him and with everyone around us. Instead of just focusing on ourselves and what can I get or how can I make myself feel better, we focus on giving of ourselves, spending time with God in prayer, growing in our relationship with Him. And the reality is that we can do this whether we are rich or poor, good-looking or ugly, healthy or unhealthy, young or old, handicapped or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what state of life you're in. It doesn't matter if you're suffering. You can practice love. And in fact, even suffering takes on a value if we understand it. We can unite our sufferings with those of our Lord, offer them up to atone for our sins or to obtain the salvation of our loved ones. So we have a purpose. We have something to live for. We have something to strive for. We want to make this world a better place. We become better individuals and more people will like us in return. This is beautiful. This is wonderful. And finally, possessing the kingdom of God is beautiful because love is beautiful. God is love. And he has created us out of love. And he manifests his love to us in so many ways. You see, when we possess the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, we come to the realization that God loves me. He desires my salvation. He desires my glorification. He desires my happiness. And all I need to do is to cooperate with him. He manifests his love to me and to all of us in so many different ways. Just think, for example, of the beauty of creation the beauty of nature. You know, it's interesting how animals cannot perceive beauty. They cannot appreciate a beautiful sunset the way that we can. Why did God make the world beautiful? It's also interesting that many animals, they, they don't see color or they're limited in their ability to see some color. But we can perceive color. We can, we can perceive beautiful things. You know, there are some atheist atheistic scientists and other scientists who don't believe in God and they believe in evolutionary theory, they cannot explain why, as human beings, we have consciousness. They can't explain that. Now, for us, it's easy to explain because we, we believe that we have an immaterial soul. But scientists, interestingly enough, evolutionary scientists, and you know the theory of evolution, it's, it's the survival of the fittest, and whenever mutations occur, if it's advantageous, that that advantageous mutation will flourish and propagate and the animal will develop that particular trait. I mean, let's say for an example, an animal develops claws, right? It's going to be advantageous for climbing or, or grasping their prey or, or whatever. But scientists cannot explain why flowers are the way that they are. Take, for example, the rose, and not just the rose, but there's many flowers that are like that. But take, for example, the rose. Why does the rose have so many rose petals? There's no advantageous reason for it. Nothing. None at all. But it's like that because God is manifesting his beauty to us in his creation. It's as if God is giving us beautiful roses, beautiful flowers. Why? Because he loves us. Why do we use flowers? We use them to decorate churches, homes, but we also give flowers as a sign of love. We're giving you something beautiful because you are a beautiful person. So God has given us roses. God has given us beautiful flowers. Everything that God created is good and for our benefit, provided that we have the right attitude towards these things. But so often people do not appreciate the beauty of nature. Why? because they're seeking their happiness in all the wrong things. The closer we draw to God, the more we begin to see the world as God created it. In other words, we begin to appreciate the beauty of nature, the beauty of flowers, the beauty of animals, and most importantly, the beauty and goodness of other human beings. And seeing this beauty, seeing this goodness, seeing that God loves us so much, that is beautiful. 
And not only does God give us so many good things in nature, but he gave us his very life. He humbled himself to become one of us. He took my sins upon himself and suffered horribly on the cross and died for me. That is so beautiful. It's marvelous. It's incredible. And he goes even further by humbling himself and making himself present under the appearance of bread and wine so that he can give his life to me, so that his life, his strength, his love can be within me so that I can begin to live as he calls me to live. If we truly understood these things, we would be amazed. We would see the beauty of all these things and we would be willing to sacrifice everything to sell everything we have in order to possess the kingdom of heaven here and now.